What's going on, fellow humans and resellers? It's is I, James, ReductionAgency.com. 23 years selling full-time on eBay. And uh, it is, we're past midday. We're going on 4 p.m. I thought I'd make a quick video and go through what's sold, but I got a question for you. What if your niche store is going to cause you to fail? Look, I'll get to the points on that. In a moment, you see a lot of people who pushes niche stores, niche stores, whatever you want to call them, and putting different things in, in different stores. But I've got a little um, theory to throw around and based on a lot of facts. So stick around for that. So we are going on 4 p.m. I'm at $536 for the day thus far. Uh, yesterday I made up $726, uh, day before $737. So not too far off on the last three days, as you can see right here. Uh, today started off really good, and then about uh, 2 o'clock again, it kind of just shut off again. Just kind of like the same pattern it did yesterday. So, um, yeah, I hope hopefully I do better than the 726. It's a lame evening time numbers. Um, but I started ending selling similar on some of my hats because, as you know, my hats have like totally dropped off since my, my media skyrocketed. Um, but I think a lot had to do with uh, ending about 10,000 in about one day. I don't know. But my numbers are still off. So it's kind of scary to ending and selling similar uh, based on that. So um, my organic numbers are still down overall for each day. Um, yesterday, 73 items sold, 64 promoted, only 9 organic. So didn't really, I think I had 9 midday yesterday. So I had no organic, if I remember correctly, so I had no organic. Uh, maybe that was, that was the day before. I'm not sure, but not getting enough organic. So today, only three organic so far. So I don't know why my organic's being so suppressed, but that's not good. Not good at all. So we'll get into some of the items that sold, and then I'm going to get into my, my theory on uh, niche stores. Niche, niche stores so got some hats here sold another fake book more hat cds i did sell a hundred dollar cd today i'll show you what that is and tell you the story behind that and i say the story over and over again and i'll give you an example as to why you might want to listen to some of the things i say <laughs> not all of them but some of them all right, we got a $30 CD there. Finally sold one of those big plush, jumbo plushes I have. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Cardinal shirt, some vinyl, some hats, more vinyl, of course. Gotta love the vinyl. More of the metal CDs that I got in a lot off of eBay. And this CD came in a lot of stuff I bought off eBay also. Um, they didn't know what they had. So I had somebody who got mad at me because they sold their CD. Was, apparently somebody watched the videos. They sent me an email. being They were mad at me calling my customer stupid for paying $100 for this CD. And I didn't respond back to them personally, but they put theirs up on Discogs at, or they listed it at medium price of Discogs. There was none on Discogs, but they listed it for medium on price on Discogs. No. And they, they sold it for like 10 bucks. No, no. When you, when you research a CD and there's none on Discogs, like I've always told you, you you're probably going to say it before I do if you watch my videos. You price it high and you wait for the offers to come in if you can't find any sold comps on it. The CD, I may have put it in way too low. There was no sold comps on it. There was one that sold on the one that, well, there was sold, there was $40, $40 was the highest sold I will, it'll be harder to find without the barcode, but try to, no. There was no, so the sole comp on Discogs, the highest one was $40. And it had several people wanting the CD. So I'm like, well, $40 was the high that may have been sealed. I'll price it at $99.99 and wait for offers to come in. And it sold overnight while I slept. So I could have priced it way too low because it sold automatically and it's going to Australia. And it was one person with zero um, feedback. So they got one feedback now, so it's going to Australia. 
Um, but the person got mad at me saying my customer's stupid for paying $100 for it because they listed their item wrong. They didn't listen to my advice on how to price CDs that you can't find no comps for. Um, you can't always go by what they sold for on Discogs because you don't know how long ago that item sold. Could have been a year ago, could have been two years ago. Uh, so if there's zero there, I always take the highest number and kind of just double it and just wait. And that's what I do. So um, yeah, this was in one of the lots I bought. I don't know which one. Um, could have been the metal lot because it's a metal band. So it could have been in the metal lot I bought. Um, so yeah. So that paid for probably, I don't remember what I paid for the whole lot. I don't even remember how many CDs were in there. Anyway, that probably paid for half of it, let's just say, so one CD. So you can still find stuff on eBay and make money off of those items. So like I said, if you find a CD and you don't find no comps for it or the comps on Discogs and there's none listed, price it high, wait, turn on the best offer and wait for offers to come in. So we got some cassettes. This was a huge lot. Somebody came in and bought tons of cassettes from me. Buy two, get two free. So they spent some good money with me. So that was good to see. Older stuff still selling. This thing's been in the store six, seven, eight years. I got a question though. When you talk about eBay hiding stuff, I've had these Game Informer magazines in my store for a very long time. Why are they now all of a sudden starting to sell? I've sold four or five to four or five different customers. Have they been hidden on eBay? Is there just a surge for the Game Informer magazine all of a sudden? I don't know. But it's kind of weird when you have them up there for a very long time, none of them ever sell. And then within like three days, you sell five of them to different customers. Those are always those questions that make you scratch your head and go, why is that? So hats, DVDs, I always find, when I find decorative, vintage looking decorative uh, stuff at the bins, I always pick that stuff up. Outlets, uh, covers, and all that. Whether it's um, door knobs or anything like that, all that kind of stuff. I love finding that stuff and grabbing it. Um, this was still part of that cassette lot there. Some more vinyl, DVDs, hat, shoes. So we're into the stuff from yesterday's video now. But um, I was kind of brainstorming while I was waking up this morning. And here's what I was thinking. So I'm going to kind of make this up as I go. But we're going to start like right here. What was Toys R Us? Toys R Us was a niche store that sold just toys. They went out of business. They didn't go out of business because another retailer per se was competition they were a niche store standalone that went out of business now they're the name is back but where are they back at they're back in Kohl's what is Kohl's Kohl's is almost like an everything store think about it you got the toys you got the clothes you got the shoes you've got uh, home goods there's a lot of different stuff in Kohl's so Kohl's, I would not say, is a niche store. Next up, Kmart. Now, Kmart was not a niche store. But what put Kmart out of business? I would say Walmart put Kmart out of business. Or Target. Walmart and Target put Kmart. Yeah, I would say Target put Kmart out of the business. Walmart put stores like Ventures and the older uh, department stores, I think, out of business. So I would say Target put Kmart out of business. So a, a department store that's not a niche put out put Kmart out of business, which is not a niche store. Circuit City, niche store. Electronics, boom, gone. Best Buy, a niche store that is basically almost out of business. They've closed so many stores. And I've made comments on video over the past several years on if Best Buy would just add other things into their, their under their brand, they would be surviving and thriving right now. But they're not. They're not making any of those moves. 
music stores, sound warehouse for one, um, CD warehouse for another. The only CD warehouses that are left are independently owned now. The company is basically gone. The only ones that are left is independently owned, and there's one here in St. Louis. That's the only one I know of right now. The other one I knew, which is this one right here, which was in Springfield, Missouri, they closed several years ago because I knew the people who, oh, I knew kind of know the people who owned it, but I was friends with one of the workers. <clears throat> but the one here in St. Louis is still open to this day. That's one right here. Um, but they're independently owned now. And what did they do? What, at least the one here in St. Louis is still surviving. It's not just a niche music store now. They have electronics in there from receivers, speakers, cassette players, etc. They also have t-shirts and clothing, vintage uh, band t-shirts. And of course, they got back into the vinyl and stuff like that. But they've had to add extra things in that's outside of the niche almost. Not quite, but it ain't just a media store anymore. And that's how they are surviving. Next up, we have Blockbuster Music, which is long gone now. We've got Blockbuster Video, which was a niche store. Now that, you could say, was has to do with rental, but still the same thing. It's still a niche store that, that vanished. Um, so that's the only ones I brought up. But think about all the other stores that have closed and the reasons why they closed. Did they close because they were a niche and people were on the line buying? Because look at the stores that are around now. Even look at the mall stores. If you look at the malls that have died off, in a mall you have basically niche stores. But what are the last stores surviving in a mall that's closing? The department stores on the end, which has a little of everything. So I was just, all this stuff was going through my head. And I go, okay, this is following a pattern is this a, a real pattern or is this just something I'm looking for, right? But then I'm like, can this be, will this be duplicated with online stores? Now, of course, we have eBay, which is an everything website. But when you talk about people with individual stores on eBay, you could look at it like a mall mentality. Are those, into, those little niche stores going to fall by the wayside? Because with a niche store, the, 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 the wants or the needs of certain things will fluctuate. But if you have an everything store, um, I think Primo Kimo was talking about it the other day. Let me make sure I'm, I'm on the... Okay, here. I was talking about the other day how he was just kind of in love with my bar graph on how consistent it looks. Now, if I had a niche store, I don't think I would have that consistent of sales. Because as you know, right now, my hats are dropped hugely. But my CDs have risen. My vinyl has risen. So there's something there balancing it out. So if I was just a hat store and my hats took a plum plummet, they would have been down 50%. My numbers would have been down 50%. I would have been like, what's going on? freaking out but something else came in and took over that 50 percent down just something to think about um some you know, if you're if you're into thinking like i am and uh processing stuff and is a niche store the way to go on ebay hmm, that's a question worth asking all right uh i think that's all for me so we kind of went through everything that was on sale so uh yeah that's it. Um, if you notice behind me, I did a little rearranging. If you can see, I don't even know if you can see it. Let me... Ah, you can't really see it too much. I'll let it follow me. Oh, it's already not going to follow me. Let me uh, control it here. Uh, which one controls? I'm not sure. I forgot which one of oh, this controls it. That's right. So let me go. Okay, it's not going to work. There we go. Oh, well, I don't know what happened there, but <laughs> my mouse is messed up. No, nope, it ain't going over. All right, well, 
and now it won't track me at all. <laughs> it's like, no, nope, we're broken. Okay, on that front. <laughs> oh, I hit the overhead mode. That's funny. That's in front of my computer. All the dust. I'll be cleaning that the next few days. Why won't it move back? Weird. All right. That's enough. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you all in the next.